It's a very nice village, but it's a bit scattered. It's a bit scattered. Awfully scattered. The scattered com community. Well, hello everyone. Welcome. This is a unplanned stream. Um, sorry if I'm streaming against anybody else, but it's difficult to find a time in the schedule. Not to help matters, I've got a throbbing headache. I've just taken two Nurofen, and hopefully my Nescafe Gold will soothe the pain. You're giving the master an headache. That's a scene from uh, Mary Poppins, if you didn't know. So we're going to be talking about a particular individual today called P.S.A. Sitch. Um, I was only vaguely aware of this uh, chap as the uh, as the kind of tag team partner of Adam Friended. Um, I had a run in with them uh, oh, about four or five months ago, I think, and I hadn't really thought about them at all, although I am told. Um, that they continuously go on about the uh, about me. Um, you know, naturally, I live rent-free in their heads, whereas I have not given any thought to them whatsoever. Um, until uh, unpopular opinions this past week when a friend of ours, Carl Benjamin, Sargon, of course, um, much to the chagrin of, G, uh, of, uh, of, of D and everybody else on the panel and in the audience, was trying to persuade me to have a talk with them yet again. Um, you know, I, I probably would never have come into contact with these people ever again uh, had Carl not done that. So I'm not, I'm not very pleased with Carl. I'm going to have words with him. Um, and in fact, as a result of this, I have made a new rule for my channel. Uh, and the rule is this. Anybody who uh, talks to Adam and Sitch, goes on their shows, uh, will not be platformed by me. Uh, Including, including my good uh, buddy Carl. Uh, I think that's a good. I think that's a good rule. Uh, I am also perturbed by the fact that there appear to be people who both watch me and who watch them. Uh, I don't like that either. In an ideal world, there would be zero crossover in that Venn diagram. And by the end of this stream, I am hoping uh, that I will have convinced uh, those of you who still do watch these two absolute reprobates. Uh, that you should not waste uh, any more time on them. Uh, you should not trust them, especially not PSA Sitch. Um, now, this is, I'm afraid to say, I've put it on AA Gold, okay? Um, this is the closest thing I have ever done to a drama stream. Uh, and there is going to be, it's going to consist of me tediously reading uh, four days of Twitter exchanges between me and PSA Sitch. So if that does not sound like fun to you, um, go and do something else. For example, you could mow the lawn, you could have a cigar, you could, at 10 o'clock, Millennial Woes as a show on Telegram, you should go and watch a gram of woes. Basically do anything else um, with your time and your life than, than watch this stream. However, if that is your bag, strap in, because this one is going to be fun, okay? Um, Leftists like to call, um, they've got this phrase, a, a teachable moment. And I'm hoping that this, uh, that by forensically analyzing the tactics, uh, the, 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 the sniveling, smarmy, snide manner in which PSA Sitch has conducted himself on Twitter, um, we will be able to um, uh, kind of keep an eye out for this sort of operator you know, a man like PSA Sitch, how he operates, how the, the, the sorts of frame games he plays, the sorts of traps he tries to lay. We're going to be watching all of this. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, those of you watching, uh, including, I mean, I'm told that Adam Friended is in the audience. He too should think twice about his association with a, a gutter snake, vermin uh, like Sitch. Uh, I have said in the uh, it, in the title of the stream, that he is relentlessly dishonest, he is a grifter, he is a dissembler, he is a liar, and a coward. And all of these um, behaviors are going to be demonstrated by our analysis of the Twitter exchange that he and I have had since the 27th of May. It's now the 30th of May, and there's about three or four days worth 
of uh, Twitter exchange on there that we are going to be looking at. Now, because of my long-standing policy of quote tweeting and not just replying, um, we're going to have to jump around a bit, okay? My, we're primarily going to follow his feed and my feed, okay? But we're not going to be able to follow one long conversation uh, d due to that policy I have. I actually do that for two reasons, the quote tweet. One uh, is, is, is as a homage, uh, is as a homage to Peter Hitchens. Um, but the other reason that I do it um, is, is actually to make it very difficult for the, uh, you know, likes of a sitch to go and quote mine, basically. Uh, you know, I want to, I actually want to keep the enemy disorientated a, a little bit. So uh, I do deliberately break up the conversation, which I know a lot of people find annoying, but I, I have found over the years strategic advantage in, uh, in, in conducting my business on Twitter that way. All right. So uh, let us, uh, let me share my screen. We're going to be, uh, uh, start on this screen, but I may have to go over to, uh, hold on. I may have to go over to my own. Uh, right here. So here's all right. So this is where it all started. Carl Benjamin um, was trying to get me to talk to Adam and Sitch. He thinks that uh, it would be good for my message, for my ideas to engage with these people um, as a way of kind of, you know, winning more people over to our side of things. And he thinks that, um, you know, the honest exchange, uh, the honest back and forth uh, would would help, basically, for some reason. Uh, D disagreed. Lots of people disagreed. Uh, one of the, I will say, I still haven't watched it, uh, but one of the chief reasons that people disagreed with that was for their appalling behavior um, uh, towards uh, Dave, the distributist. Dave uh, is a very nice guy. Uh, we all know him. We're all friends of his. And many, many people have told me independently that the way they treated him was completely unforgivable. Now, Dave is a good Christian. I am not a good Christian, um, so I don't forgive, and I'm driven by uh, by nasty things like revenge. So um, I, will, uh, I will happily uh, do this as a receipt uh, for Dave as much as for myself. So anyway, well, what happened was is that if you remember... Uh, it was pointed out by uh, Closington that Julius Evola's um, Wikipedia page had um, ha had changed quite dramatically between 2014 and now. Um, I'm see, let me see if I can find the... Uh, I, anyway, I made a tweet sharing how Evola's page looked in 2014, where they were like, yeah, this was an Italian philosopher, an eco-terrorist, uh, blah, 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 uh, versus now when you read it, and it's like fascist, 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 fascist. Okay, so th they've basically turned his Wikipedia page into a hit job so that uh, when smooth brains like Adam or uh, Sitch uh, go onto that page, the first thing they're confronted with is a load of trigger words that cloud their judgment, that trigger their element, that tr trigger their uh, emotional elephants, if you want, um, and stop them. You know, they freak out and they're like, oh, these are all naughty words. So that means we, we, we can't think about a thinker like this. So given that Carl had put uh, friended back in, back in my head, I just did a little tweet at him and said, um, this is your research. Because if you remember, back when we talked about old tomboy Absgate and I mentioned Evola, uh, these clowns uh, literally read the first paragraph of Wikipedia and said, ooh, that's bad. So clearly, whoever edited that Wikipedia page, their tactic had worked. Because most people in the world, 99% of people, aren't going to go and read Revolt Against the Modern World. They're just going to go to his Wikipedia page. And if it's a load of scary bad words then, uh, you know, they're going to react as uh, as these two clowns did. Um, uh, incidentally, just as by the by, uh, I, I believe the reason that hit job ha happened on Evola's um, page is because Steve Bannon mentioned him. 
uh, if, if you if you search for Avila, you'll see a lot of Steve Bannon come, stuff comes up. Uh, and that is because he, he just mentioned him. And uh, that was the real reason that they did the hit job, uh, all the hit pieces and the, the Wikipedia stuff. Um, uh, anyway, so what happened? Well, after I tweeted that, a friend did. He blocked me. Fair enough. And I said, there's your answer, Carl. And I thought, well, that would be the end of it. I thought, brilliant. That was that done and dusted. I won't have to think about this uh, moron ever again in my life. And Carl will be satisfied because he decided to block me. So the conversation can't happen. Brilliant. To kill two birds with one stone. Let's carry on and do something else. However, what happened? Um, PSA Sitch. He said the door is still open to man up, grow a pair, quackademic agent and um so this door is still open to man up grow a pair quackademic agent and talks to us live instead of passing notes on twitter like a scared schoolgirl. so that was his opening gambit this was his this was his uh come on our show uh while while i call you names okay and then he said if you want to stop hiding behind your skirt and embody the masculine energy you pretend to fight for. Come on, come on and talk to him, basically. Well, this is promising, isn't it? It's a nice, nice start. So he, he started in an antagonistic mode, but you think, well, this is Twitter, bit of banter, maybe. You know, these two are known for their comedy, apparently. Um, you know, let's see. Well, I was like, well, let's. Let's entertain the prospect of doing as Carl says. Uh, you know, just feel him out a little bit, see where this could possibly go. Well, let's have a look where it went. I'm going to have to jump back to my bit now. Uh, here we go. What would you like to talk about? That was my reply. What would you like to talk about? But we'll go back to his stream. I hope this is fun for everyone. I hope this popcorn uh, malarkey is your is your thing. I'll be on Kino Casino before you know it. Uh, is he scared or does he just value his time more than you value yours? Britisher face. Look at that. Look at the Britisher faces. <laughs> um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Let me get a drink so I can catch up. By the way, um, there's a fellow on Twitter called Dr. Diddler. I'm not comfortable with that name. If any mods see Dr. Diddler in the chat, ban him immediately, please, because this is a no-non zone. There may be paedophiles in your audience, Sitch, but I don't want any in mine. Um, I was utterly terrified before when AA refused to talk to us because he was too scared. Yeah, blah blah blah. Uh, where where's this bit where he says what when he answers? What do you want to talk about? It looks like he's deleted that, has he? Anyway, well, let's follow my timeline. It might be easier than following his. He's one of these people who tweets a lot. I tend to do these. All right, so um, here we go. Right, so he says this is his response to. What would you like to talk about? PSA Sitch. Scary abs. Ethno-nationalism. Why you hate Jews and non-whites so much. Whatever goofy stuff you want. Upside down smiley face. I said we've discussed abs. I'm not, have never been an ethno-nationalist. I do not hate Jews. I do object to people like Chuck Schumer demonstrating open anti-white hatred and divided loyalties while in office. I have never said anything bad about non-whites. Has that saved you the convo? I thought it was a pretty honest answer. I thought his opening salvo was pretty dishonest because he makes it sound like what I talk about on this channel is ethno-nationalism, anti-Jew stuff, and anti-non-white anti stuff. You know... Does this sound like an honest actor to you so far? 
Does this sound like someone who's uh, willing to engage in a open and free discussion and exchange of ideas? Carl, did you, this was your fucking idea. Is this is this the sort of person who you think that I should be engaging with? Is this the sort of person who any of you watching this sh would want to engage with? Is this the any per sort of person that any of you who are watching this should watch or engage with? Adam, if you're still watching, is this the sort of person that you should be engaging with? Somebody who's opening salvo is something as dishonest as that. Anyway, let's con let's let's con let's continue. Where, where where does it go? Where does he take it from here? Yes, I actually have AA's docs. I'm effing white, a black guy. I said this is actually racist. I mean, this is just. I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand why he posts that. You know. For one thing, um, you know, you can have a debate about whether I'm white or not, but I'm certainly not black. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's that. So I don't really understand what he's, what he's trying to get at when, when he says that. Um, if anybody's interested in my response to that question, I have a Substack post called "Am I White?" where I discuss the complexities of growing up as somebody. Um, with parents from two different nationalities, uh, you know, and all of that, all of the stuff that that entails and how it may have impacted uh, the way you view your identity. You know, if, you, if you'd like, if you're interested, you can, you can read that sub stack. But of course, PSA Sitch is not interested. All he's interested in is scoring uh, cheap, uh, cheap pops, cheap, cheap kind of, Little, little, little likes and claps from his baying army of drooling morons and fucking pedophiles. So let's continue. I said D was correct. Carl, why do you want me to waste my time talking to this total wastrel? And again, this is just honest responses to a, a person who clearly clearly is not engaging in any sort of good faith whatsoever. And I ask anybody watching this or anybody who watches this in the future, why should a person like this have a space in this sort of online discourse whatsoever? Why should anybody who's a content creator engage with someone as dishonest as that? This is a question to be asked. Let alone send the fucking guy money. Why should anybody watch this person? Now let's continue. I said, since you have my dogs, why don't you ask about my best-selling book, The Populist Illusion, available in all good bookstores? Did you read it? Why not? Why should a world-class scholar and best-selling author talk to you? Again, a, a, you know, a good, a good question. I had to delay this stream uh, tonight because Evelyn and Scrump uh, did a stream reviewing my book and talking about the importance of developing a canon of literature. Uh, that is good activity. If you haven't watched that stream, you should go and watch that instead of you wasting wasting your time watching this. But unfortunately, I do have to, I do feel the need to make this stream um, because there are pieces of shit like this still somehow involved in our circles. Of course he didn't fucking read the book. He doesn't even know what the, he doesn't even know there is a book. PSA Sitch, we call out CRT people who hate white people all the time. So, of course, we have to call out the other side as well. Would hate to be a hypocrite, Britisher face. All right. I said, you seem to have me confused for a 2017 era Daily Stormer poster. It's not like I have hundreds, if not thousands of hours of content you can watch or anything. You are utterly beneath engagement. So let's see where this goes. I mean, how this was 28th of May. But uh, I mean, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, OK, uh, hold on a minute. I need to make sure that I have my. I have this version of it. Just bear with me a second, folks. Bear with me a second, folks. We need to make sure that we get 
incidental bits of conversation as well. Because I want to be completist about this. Now, there could be like sneaky, sneaky tweets that he sent that I'm missing in all of this. But I think if we follow my timeline, we may get most of it. Let me just check his a minute. Um, there he is talking to Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. You see? Now, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald talked to my friend Aaron McIntyre the other week. I'm worried about Glenn Greenwald and Aaron McIntyre being caught up with the likes of this dirt bag. You see, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy about someone as relentlessly fucking dishonest as this. Uh, being involved. I think he should be ostracized. I think he should be purged from all our spaces. I think he should be, you know, treated like a treated like a fucking leper, if I'm honest. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's see where else see where else this goes. I want to make sure I don't miss any hot juicy action. There's the Evola post, by the way. This is the one. Look, there you can see. Also, he was an Italian philosopher, an esoterist. Um, and then here, fascist, 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 fascist. Look, they even went to the to the bother of changing his picture to look a bit more evil between 2014 and and now. So that's uh, that was what kind of kicked this off. I said, "This is your research." Friend did block me. PSA Sitch uh, decided to, uh, you know, well, do the stuff that we're having a look here. Okay, well, there, 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 there's a bit more here. Uh, um, uh, how does this work then? So why is it skipped from 26th to 29th? Bear with me a second, folks. I, I, I think Twitter works in a strange way. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Eat your popcorn. Go and watch Woes. Go and walk your dog. <sighs> Go and watch Tim Pool. Right. Okay, right, sorry. So, apparently, t if you look at tweets and replies, it only looks at your replies. Whereas if you look at profile, it only looks at your main ones. Is that right? Twitter is confusing. So you see, my my strategies are so effective; it's even it's even difficult for me to. Uh... Why does it do that then? Okay, right. We're, we're we're back in action. We're back in action. Let me just make sure everybody can uh, see this. There's the chat. Seven hundred and fifty-one people watching. You should all be fucking ashamed of yourselves. You should all be ashamed of yourselves watching this low-tier content. Anyway, um, so let's let's continue. So. Uh, the thing I understand least about Adam and Sitch is how many people in my audience still spend their time watching these relentless morons. Why? I could literally name 100 better content creators you could watch. Uh, this is coming soon. Uh, uh, okay, so went quiet for a while. Uh, here was my advice for what people who are kind of new to these spaces should do to give themselves the speed run. I will tell you, because these are all things that you could be doing instead of watching this stream. Number one, watch every edited uh, Morgoth video, uh, every one that he's ever made. Number two, watch every Charlemagne video. If uh, if Charlie, if you're watching, uh, good day, sir. I, I can't see the chat, so I don't actually know who's around. Um, three, Watch every black-pilled edited movie review, okay? And four, then pause to consider how many aspects of your old beliefs have been crushed. Um, these are all things that, uh, if you're relatively new to these spaces, you should do because the the process of watching friends like Morgoth, Charlie, and Blackpilled um, is that they will start to undo some of that kind of um, reflect self, kind of reflexive, 
conditioning that you get, uh, you know, the, some of your basic assumptions and beliefs about things. And they start to do that process of just, of just kind of peeling back uh, the, the, the layers of the system and how it works and, um, and so on and so forth. So that, that's why I would suggest starting with those three. Um, you know, Charlie does a, did an awful lot of good synthesis work back in the day, summary stuff. Uh, basic elite theory stuff, Mulbug, um, you know, Morgoth is a genius, of course, and Black Pills movie reviews are um, quite good at showing how subtle a lot of the propaganda was, especially before the, uh, you know, the current kind of woke era. Uh, now it's a lot more incompetent, the propaganda, but it it is there going right back to the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, Watch his review of uh, something like Pleasantville, for example, to see how a lot of your old boomer Gen X assumptions can be turned completely on their on their head. Um, that was me saying I'm going to watch the Obi Wan new Obi Wan series. I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. You see, I could have been I could have been making my AA retrospective tonight. Instead, I'm do, doing this bullshit. Uh, Let's have a look. Um, where does Chuck, where does PSA Sitch come back into the picture? Hold on. I'm going to go on his page again. Uh, he has a lot more snidey tweets that I could look at. Oh, hold on. The offer is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, so there's a bit of um, Sitch just going back and forth with uh, various different people on Twitter. I don't know if we need to go th through all of that. Uh, okay, here we go. I think it's worth going back to his page just to see some of his comebacks. And what he's got in it, what's interesting is what he's got on his mind, first and foremost, because I think it's important given where this conversation goes and given the many dissembling tactics uh, he, he is to show in the next couple of days. So when I said, you've got me confused for a 2014 era uh, Daily Stormer poster, he says, translation, don't ask me about why I constantly say not to trust Jews and tell people to read books about the JQ. I say other things sometimes. Ask me about something other than my bigotry towards usage. Oh, Oh, right. Okay. So now, now he's coming back to note the question of this. Um, all right. Interesting. Why is he talking about that? Kind of, he's fixated on this one question. Um, his response to my thing about the book was to repost this, of course. Um, what else did he say? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so he says academic agent this friend are now accusing me of doxing him for all they did was out him as a living meme. Oh. Would you would a better response be to block, ignore? Seems the situation is lose lose, don't you think? And then he's saying they drew first blood, not me. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, okay. What's this all about then? What's this one? Uh, E.M. Penner came back. Funny how he came out of the woodwork uh, as well. Uh, Penner, by the way, got suspended during this, during this whole conversation uh here we go uh he says i i said i literally don't discuss this topic so i don't know why it's even being brought up the most hardcore ethnationalists i've ever met by the way have been israeli they have a racial superiority or complex issue laughing why is that funny i mean that's literally true that is literally true the most hardcore ethnic nationalists I have ever come across have been or have all been Israeli. 
That's just a fact. Um, you know, they literally bombard me with stuff, you know, telling me why their group is better than everybody else's. So anyway, he thinks that's funny. He says, you are. Who's that group of 2% in elite positions of power that you complain about and don't know what to do because in the past you could run them out of the country, but now that doesn't work because of globalization? Okay. So he's bringing it back to, he's bringing it back to that question. Now note, by the way, he brought that question up. I, would everybody agree? Let, let's, let's stop. Let's stop and say, who was it that brought up the JQ? Who was it that brought up this group? If it was me, press one. And if it was fucking PSA Sit who brought up the JQ, press two. Press one if you think it was me you brought up the JQ, and press two if you thought it was Sitch who brought up the JQ. Don't you just love democracy, friends? Everybody says it was two. Is the weasel Adam Friended still in that chat? Where are you, Adam? Are you still in that chat? Have you been following along? Who brought it up? Was it me or was it him? Was it me or was it him? Who brought it up? Come on, Adam. Who brought it up? It was Sitch, wasn't it? Where are you, Adam? Are you running scared, son? Who brought it up, weasel? Who brought it up? I am not continuing this stream until Adam Friended says, yes, unironically, academic agent, it was my tag team partner, PSA Sitch, who brought that up from the get-go. It was him. He brought it up. The Mossad said AA never brought it up on his streams ever. So there we go. But where is Adam? I just, it's really important to establish facts early in a narrative. We have to anchor it. We have to, we have to track where the conversation went, how it developed. And this is a really important early fact in what I'm presenting to you. Who was it who brought it up, Adam? Was it me or was it Sitch? Okay, let's just take it. Let's just, let's just take it as read. Okay, that Adam is just admitting to himself in the privacy of his own room that it was Sitch who brought it up, okay? We have, we have uh, <clears throat> established this, okay? So let's, let, let's just carry on with this, okay? Um, yeah, 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 okay. So where does this go now? Uh, I'm just, uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Here was my uh, encounter with Dr. Diddler. I said, I'm not getting into this. You have a very dodgy username. He says, how dare you? He's a respected doctor. Uh, yeah. Um, what's this bit of a conversation here then? Okay, so he said, it's extra hilarious that the person with such a troll stock image avatar didn't get classic poll meme. Also ironic that anyone from the AA symptom would be irate about supposed dishonesty when an AA is very open about concealing his power level to avoid quote unquote Susan. I said everybody has to avoid the eye of Susan. Everyone. PSA Sitch. I've never hidden a belief. I've had to use code or had to use code words to describe it out of fear of censorship. I've never hidden a belief I've had or used code words to describe it out of fear of censorship. Just gonna let that hang there for a moment before we look at some of my replies to that tweet. 
Now, I'll go back on my uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the list of 100 content creators who were better than a PSA Citroen Adam, by the way. You can read that in your own time. Good names on there. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought that was Lacey Green, by the way, but it's not, it's not. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just talking about Obi Wan. Okay, here we go. I said well, you might want to ask why it is those people have the power to censor as they do. You might also want to ask why your views are so milk to toast that they do not require censoring. So that was my first response to that. This guy says, so Sitch believes that liberalism is fantastic for its ability to create freedom, but also mocks non-liberals for having to conceal their views in the supposedly free liberal state. Interesting. I said, this is a strange duality in PSA Sitch, but such dualities are extremely typical of his ilk. And this is something that you should look out for. I mean, he's, he's literally making a virtue of the fact that he is not censored by YouTube and by the likes of Susan. You know, he, he's making a virtue of the fact that his views are regime approved and therefore good. My views are good because they're approved by the regime. My views are bad because they're not approved by the regime. That's basically what he's saying uh, in, that, in that. Yet, he is a self-styled, enlightened, centrist liberal. You don't need to read too much Carl Schmidt to understand where his allegiances really lie and the game that he's playing here. You see, because he's relying on the fact that YouTube censors to make a virtue of the fact that we don't speak openly on YouTube for fear of censorship. You know, th this guy is meant to be like some free speech advocate. He's meant to be on your side in some way. Well, why is he making a virtue of the fact that YouTube censor? Anybody who watches him here, explain to me what the fuck that tweet was. Let me just read it again. I've never had a belief I've had or used code words to describe it to fear of censorship. What's he saying? If, if there are any fans of this person here explain to me how you can defend that how you can defend that statement from within his liberal frame he said you might want to ask why i embody that open and honest masculine principle you rave about and you embody the deceitful feminine principles of concealment you spend so much time complaining about. That was his response. I said, why is it that some people have the power to censor what we're allowed to say when your views are so milquetoast? And he comes back saying that actually it's embodying a masculine principle to speak openly and proudly about fucking supporting the Ukraine war or whatever other nonsense this person believes okay his regime approved views but it's it's feminine to you know not fed post on youtube not use certain not use certain uh, uh terms that would get you banned but you know that, that, that that's feminine concealment according to this fucking piece of shit i said it's honest and masculine to mouth regime propaganda to the approval of Susan and a chorus of sub 100 IQ pay pigs. Seriously, why does anybody watch this guy? Poe, if you're here, what the fuck are you doing wasting your time watching this twat? 
I said, here the liberal has literally checkmated himself and shown the system he defends to be as totalitarian and censorious as the system he rails against. He has shown himself to be a friend to power while he recognizes me as an enemy, both to power and to himself. Because ultimately that's what Sitch is. He is a defender of this system that we live in right now. He is actually a defender of Susan. He may pretend that he's against censorship on his show, but actually when push comes to shove, he is pro-censorship, as these tweets prove. Let's continue. He says, it's honest that I speak what I believe, not what someone wants me to say. It is just dishonest that you hide your beliefs in coded language out of fear. You've created, right, again, I'm going to have to pause on each one of these tweets because it shows what a disgusting vermin this sitch is. It shows what a despicable cunt he is, okay? He says, it's honest that I speak what I believe and not what someone wants me to say. It is dishonest that you hide your beliefs in coded language out of fear. You've created a persecution complex to try and justify the hatred you feel toward yourself and your impotence. I said, no, I haven't. I live in a society in which you can be fired or banned without warning for saying things that displease the status quo. Your dishonesty is astonishing, even for a liberal of your stripe. Now think of the disrespect and and damage Sitch has done to every single person who's ever been deplatformed, to every single person, to all of those create content creators I listed who have been kicked off Patreon, who have lost half of their income overnight. Morgoth, who I mentioned, who lost his who lost his Patreon um, a few months ago, uh, Computing Forever, who had the balls to speak up uh, against the. Uh, the, the, the COVID stuff, lost half of his income overnight. Carl, who started all this off, has been demonetized many times. Okay, he's come back, but still, the, the fact of the matter is, is that all of these people have experienced censorship. It's not a fucking persecution complex, Sitch. People have consequences. Just because your milk toast views don't get censored does not mean it doesn't happen and it doesn't mean it doesn't have consequences. You know, if some of your liberal friends, I don't know, fucking quartering or EFAP e blokes, whoever, watch this, they also have to ask themselves, why do they pal around with a piece of shit like this who behaves as if? It's just, I'm just fucking imagining that people get deplatformed. The people get fired from their jobs for saying for, for speaking out against their against the approved status quo. I just imagined that, did I? What a piece of work is this PSA sitch. And then and then he'll have the gall to go on his two-bit show tomorrow night, calling himself a free speech defender. You don't need friends like this. Nobody, this is an enemy. If you cannot spot that this is an enemy, you shouldn't be watching this. I said nobody should let this level of dishonesty go. When a piece of shit like this, like Sitch, says things like this, he's asking you to believe that hope not hate, the ADL and so on, do not exist and do not make people's lives hell. He's literally covering for power. Disgusting vermin. He's he's a moral leper, is what he is. When when I see friends of mine listed in the covers of Hope Not Hate, this guy Sitch is covering for that. He he's trying to pathologize it. He's trying to say to quote persecution complex to try to justify the. Justify the hatred you feel toward yourself and your in your in your impotence. We just fucking imagined it. So if you're watching this and you were one of those people who were listed in Hope Not Hate, as Carl was, by the way, ask yourself why your mate, PSA Sitch here, is, is trying to pathologize that and saying, well, it's just it's just a persecution complex. 
It's just a persecution complex that an organized group with power and money and 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 a, and a, and a team of lawyers can just pick on ordinary people who are trying to make a living in the, in the world. You you cover for that. Adam, if you're watching this, how can you how can you stand by and sit by this fucking trash? It's disgusting. It really is. Let's continue. PSA Sitch says, I don't know anything about hope, not hate offhand, but I criticize the ADL all the time when I see them doing bad, censorious things. You have this weird straw man of me, of some MSM guy, but I can see I struck a nerve. Peace. Oh, all oh, right. You, oh, well, right. Yeah, yeah, I criticize the ADL. So all this fucking bollocks I was talking down here is justified. No, it's not. That's that's not an answer, Sitch. Saying, oh, I've criticized the ADL doesn't mean fucking, it doesn't mean anything. When you're trying to make out that those of us who may have experienced some of the, you know, the uh, the censorship of the regime, let's just say, or deplatforming or whatever else, who've actually suffered real world consequences, we, oh no, it's just, um, it's just a persecution complex. It's just, we just try to justify the hatred that we feel towards ourselves. Fucking cunt. Absolute fucking cunt. Really disgusting person. We haven't even started yet, by the way, friend. You better strap in, because this goes on for another three days. We haven't even started yet. <clears throat> I said, hope not hater of British outfit, who do a yearly hit piece on many good people, including friends of mine. The point is that it is sensible not to speak openly in such, a, in such a society. Remember, the original point is why we use code words on, on YouTube. Your cover for SJW, you cover for SJWs when you act like it's some insane paranoia, when it's obviously why people do it. Who or what SJWs do I cover for exactly? I said, when you say you've created a persecution complex, to try and justify the hatred you feel towards yourselves and your impotence, it suggests that these organizations and the disgusting people who ruin lives do not exist. They do. You run cover for them. You're a slave to power. And he is a slave to power. He is a, an avatar of the regime. He's basically Vouch. Only less successful than Vouch, obviously. He says, when you're the extremist, everyone else seems moderate. I said, actually, the extremist view is the liberal one of recent years, and most of us embody the historical norm. We live in the exception, which is our tragedy. He says, unless you're advocating for a return to monkey, none of us is embodying any historical norm. Now, let's think about, let's, let's think about this bit of sitch logic here unless you're advocating for return to monkey none of us is embodying any historical norm i said i don't understand this point why would you relativize to that extent recorded history demonstrates our norms is this some airport tier yuval noah harari take because that's the sort of point that noah uh the yuval noah harari yeah you know, that's the sort of point he makes in his shockingly crap book sapiens uh i don't know where that where that goes does that do we continue on about that point he says who dat i said he wrote a book called sapiens in which he took the view that we are not very well adapted to live in our societies and suggested the agricultural revolution was bad he says hmm well i definitely wouldn't say it's bad but a lot of problems seem to stem from what humans adapted for clashing up against how we're currently living. So there we go. I mean, he's, he's, this is the first time now in, this is like, we started this on the 27th. It's now on the 29th. And uh, he started to open up a bit, you know, this is a bit of actual conversation. Interesting that when I mentioned Yuval Noah Harari, uh, you know, a WEF approved fucking, court uh airport tier philosopher thinker 
type person. He suddenly uh, Sitch got interested and started to talk. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, see where else this goes. He says, okay, so this was the earlier one. Don't ask me about why I constantly say not to trust Jews. I said, you seem very caught up about this group. Why is that then? I think that's a fair question. Like, why, why is he going back to the JQ all the time? What's the big deal? Why, why is he... Why does he keep on going back to that question? It's, I mean, you'd see it's been a big theme with, with his posting so far. Uh, does he respond to that? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. There, there may be the reason. There may be the reason. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. This guy says, I'm not saying there aren't organizations or people who won't try to cancel you and others. You've created a persecution complex. Which is it? Is he imagine all of the censorship or is it real? An AA justified. You contradicted yourself out of dishonesty. Yes, yeah, weird how he does that, isn't it? Isn't it weird how he how he how he does that? Hmm. Anyway, let us continue our look at the piece of work that is PSA Sitch. So there's Red Hawk gets involved. What's this? What's this bit of talk here? Uh, okay, boring. Let's carry on. Uh, he says, "Well, unfortunately, leftist neo-Marxists have run wild with the idea. The idea of the blank slate." He's replying to. Red Hawk here, but someone how liberalism gets the blame for that uh, from the far right. I said not just from the far right, but also from people like me who are not the far right at all. All you need to do is read the diagnosis from critics of liberalism and democracy to see how liberalism is simply socialism at a different speed limit. Ahem. <clears throat> He says, are you telling me you didn't used to say don't trust redacted on your old Twitter handle? And what is Jewish power in the USA? How does it manifest? I said, do you really want a list of all the ways Jewish power manifests itself in the USA? How long do you have? Just last week, Congress discussed the bill to combat Jewish fertility rates openly over demographic concerns. Why did this conversation even happen? Uh, and then we get we get into, you know, there's old uh, Lindsey Graham. I said, very well. First, take a moment to look at this picture. Tell me what you see. How does this picture represent what is best for the people of South Carolina that Lindsey Graham is elected to represent? Now, this is a question I have raised with people before. Um, I have raised it with Israeli buddies of mine, and we've gone back and forth over it. Um, but um, we didn't really get uh, a, a response. So anyway, we st I said... So, so this is where we really get going on this question now, because before we before we can even have the discussion, first of all, we have to, have to establish, like, well, is there a group at all? Like, do we actually agree that there is a group of people who may have an interest? So I said, just so we have a baseline at the start of this discussion, is your basic position to deny that there is quote, a sectional Jewish interest in American politics and society? Or do you readily accept that this exists? I think this is a very simple question. Either this group exists and it has interests, uh, like, like other groups exist and have interests, or it's not really a group. Okay, It's either one or the other. It's, an, it's a simple question. Is there such a thing as a sectional Jewish interest? Not difficult. He says, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. I, I don't know what you mean by a sectional Jewish interest. Sorry, I'm just going to. I don't know what you mean. Did you hear that, Pat? He doesn't know. He doesn't know what it means. He's never heard the term before. I don't know what you mean by sectional Jewish interest. 
Is it just boring supporting Israel stuff we've heard a hundred times, or is there something more interesting? Oh yeah, I mean the Israel stuff. That's just boring. That's just. I mean that's that's not evidence of there being a uh, a kind of organized special interest group at all. That's just boring. Uh, yawn. Um, but uh, it, you know there could be something else. So I just said, you don't know what a sectional Jewish interest is. Tell me. Um, and we've skipped some stuff because there was some incidental talk about Julius Evola along the way that I've I have not bored you with here. But basically, back when me and uh, these guys went at it before. Uh, rather than read any of Evola's main works, Sitch beeline to his um, his little pamphlet, Three Aspects of the Jewish Question, or, the, or whatever it's called, Three, as three Aspects of uh, the, the Jewish Issue. I can't remember what it's called. And, um, you know, this is a quite a little-known Evola pamphlet in his overall oeuvre. It's a minor work. Like, it's, you know, his, his big books are Revolt and Ride the Tiger. and But for some reason... Sitch beelined it right to that one. And I just said, tell me, why did you beeline to Evola's minor pamphlet about Jewry rather than start with a revolt like every other person? Did he answer that? Remind me. I said, I can't see what's in your head, and unlike you, I will not psychologize. People are accusing him of being a hatchling because he's he literally says... I do not know what you mean by a sectional Jewish interest. So we're, we're, we're now at the start of this discussion. We can't even have the discussion because Sitch says he doesn't actually understand what a sectional Jewish interest is. So, so it, it's like, well, you actually cannot even start a dialogue if one of the two parties is claiming that he doesn't actually understand a really fundamental concept like group interests. Let's carry on. He says, come on, I want to learn about examples of Jewish power, cry face. So far, we have a picture of a senator simping with a PM of Israel to appease the evangelicals. And a puff, oh yeah, I mean, that's the only reason that any senator in America uh, supports Israeli causes is, is because of the evangelicals, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, there is some truth to that, by the way, that the evangelicals are quite big on that issue. But still, it's still dishonest to to say, to, to pin the cause just on the evangelicals. And a puff piece, uh, non-binding re resolution that needlessly shoehorns in minority groups. OK, so. I said, Sitch not only evaded uh, my base and incidentally, by the way, in response to that, one guy posted literally, I'm not kidding you, 33 different links to mainstream sources answering his question. Another guy linked a study empirically breaking down by percentages the number of this particular group in various elite, in various elite circles in America, positions of power, all broken down by percentage. Okay, so he actually got like he got a huge raft of material. Obviously, he didn't fucking look at a single one of those links because we understand already that this guy is not honest and he's just not honest in the way he interacts with people. He's just a dishonest actor. He's a liar and he's a coward, as we're demonstrating throughout this stream. I said Sitch not only evaded my baseline question intended to anchor this exchange, but also pretended that he did not know what a sectional Jewish interest is, like a hatchling. He seemed like someone who wastes time. And then um, somebody posted Morgoth's classic, Archetypes of the Left, The Hatchling. This is Sitch after, don't forget, a couple of days earlier, really highlighting the, the, the JQ in his questions to me and accusing me of all sorts of things now at the start of this discussion, is acting like he doesn't understand that there is even such a thing as the Jewish, as a Jewish group of people who may have interests. He's just, he's just den outright denying that there's such a thing, which is very problematic, as we'll see. But um, So, Archetypes of the Left, The Hatchling by Morgoth, classic video, 
And if you haven't watched it, you should. It's one of Morgoth's very best. Uh, Red Hawk, the point you made, Sargon, was 100% correct. For them to understand our positions, they have to do hours and hours of research. For their positions, all you have to do is to turn on CNN. CNN may have too many words for Sitch, to be honest. PSA Sitch says, I didn't evade anything. I asked you to define your terms, at which point you became incredulous. I talk about how most arguments are really arguments about definitions. So often, someone even made a graphic for it. I said you pretended not to know what a sectional Jewish interest means. Since you appear not to know what that is, I have to assume your IQ is below 80 and discontinue further engagement, which I think is really fair, because it's really fucking obvious what a sectional interest is. Nobody, nobody who is honestly engaging would deny that they know what that what that is. Yes, he is. And so it goes on. There's a whole other day of various people denying that they know what this phrase means. Base takes comes in. Incidentally, I had a little look at base takes. Uh, should we have a look at base takes and what he does? There's base takes. Interesting, interesting avatar. Uh, oh, there he is talking about the JQ. There he is talking about panel. Oh, oh, interesting. All base takes does all day, every day is talk about this issue. He, talk, he talks about this issue. Oh, it, it's it's almost like base takes has a sectional interest in this issue, isn't it? It's almost like base takes is a living embodiment of what I'm talking about. Someone who talks about this all day, every day. But anyway, let's, let's continue. He says, this was a discussion about infertility and how it impacts certain communities and AAC's Jewish power. I think we should compare the power in AA's mind to how much power there is in reality. I said, okay, base takes, why not, why not let's test your theory by having you talk loudly against Jewish interests for the next week and see if there are any consequences. You could also try doing the same thing against white interests too. And I think everybody knows, everybody watching this understands that there is, that there is such a thing as organized groups who will, who will, um, you know, close against somebody, do do sorts of things uh, if they are too loud on this issue. For example, why is the Occidental Observer banned? It, like what why is it why why is it not allowed on any uh, payment processors? What why I mean why when you post a if you try to post a link of that uh, into a into a Twitter private chat, is it is it just hard blocked? You, you, you tell me that. Why, when you go on to BitChute, if you want to, I don't know, research uh, certain bits of revisionist history, um, if I try to do that, it's just blocked by the UK government. It just says, oh, your country won't allow you to view this footage. Who did that? Was it, was it, um, was it Native Americans? Was it Catholics? No, it wasn't, was it? There, there, there was a specific group who were behind those actions, and you know exactly why it was. Whether you agree with those, whether you agree with their logic or you disagree with their logic, the fact of the matter, it was them. So don't fucking deny it, based takes, all right? So then uh, Dr. Diddler was claiming that we live in a competence hierarchy. Uh, more talk about uh, Obi Obi Wan. Uh, yeah, okay. What's this about? His answer. So his answer when I said, you pretended not to know what sectional Jewish interest means. He says, it's true. I was sick the day at Sunday school when they handed out the secret Ashkenazi Jewish IQ enhancement serum. <laughs> Twat. Fucking knob end. Let's carry on. Just to... I said, since you refuse to admit that there is even such a thing as sectional Jewish interests, on what grounds is anti-Semitism a valid category? I mean, there's no such thing by your own definition. You like you, you just will not acknowledge that there's such a thing. So how can there be such a thing as anti-Semitism? 
it's literally impossible. You're, you're, you're denying the group even exists. I said, since PSA Sitch cannot define or admit that there is such a thing as a sectional Jewish interest, he would surely agree that there is no raison d'etre for the nation of Israel to exist. And he would also agree that all lobby groups specifically related to Jew Jews in the USA should be disbanded at once. Because if you follow his logic, there are no sectional interests for this group. So none of these groups that have names like, uh, you know, uh, the American Jewish Committee and you know, APAC and all the, um, uh, you know, ADL, you, you name all these different groups, there's 146 of them. They have no reason to exist, do they? They, they, they literally shouldn't exist according to Sitch's logic. And, and neither, of course, uh, should, uh, should the name nation there. Because <clears throat> if you read its constitution, it was specifically set up as a homeland for Jews. But according to this guy, they have no sectional interest. If you're a Zionist in my in my chat here, it, you know, Mossad I saw was watching, how do you feel about this guy saying that you don't exist? Like, like literally you have no interest. If it was me, I'd be angry at him. So, you know, I, I find it really odd. It's like, this is like d just, just outright denialism. So uh, get beyond this uh, stuff here. That was the guy who uh, shared the stats. I, I don't know what, what's happened to him. Uh, um. So now, now, this, now this kind of like proxy dude for uh, Sitch turns up, the kind of, you know, a, a, a minion if you want. And he says, uh, he has no idea what you're talking about with sectional Jewish power. Your baseline example is weak. He's not playing the hat shilling. You're only appealing to your base. All oh, right, I'm, I'm appealing to my base by just just saying, is there such a thing a sectional Jewish Jewish interest? That's just appealing to my base, apparently. I said, let me know if you too don't know what sectional Jewish interests are, and I can explain them to you as if you were a five year old. If more than twenty people say they too don't understand, I'll do an explainer, and then I will block you for stupidity. He comes back. I have never encountered this term before, nor am I interested enough in it to find my, myself. Perhaps I know the phenomenon this term refers to, but you never laid out uh, beyond Jews have outside influence, so no one all counts. I said, why are you not interested? There are 146 Jewish organizations in the USA, funded and organized. They care about you, but you don't care about them. This asymmetrical relationship has explanatory power i.e. they're organized and he's not. So now this guy, after sustained attack from uh, various people, is now claiming that the term sectional interest is, in, is, is kind of British and that he's not getting it because he's American. He doesn't understand what Jewish sectional interest means because he's American and not British. It's a lie. It's just not true, is it? This is just cope from this guy. This guy then says, come on, guys, it's not hard to understand. And he pulls up the English dictionary and looks up the word sectional. And I said the hatchling must maintain his pretense of having zero knowledge of the world at all costs, even when he's sitting in front of Google. Yet in the next breath, the disingenuous dissembler PSA Sitch will use terms like dog whistle, pathological liars. You see, this is tactically pretending not to know what a word means as a as a as a strategy, as a kind of um it, it, it's a it's a strategy to um kind of frustrate your ideological opponent or your or your enemy in this case. And he is our enemy. He's my personal enemy, but he's also your enemy as well, this guy. This strategy of just literally pretending not to know what it means. It's Hatchling 101. And yet, remember, this started with him front-loading his concern as a Jew about the JQ. 
Now let's continue. This twat Harry and Gladive pipes up in the middle of it all. Obviously, Harry and jumps in on Sitch's side. Another piece of shit. He says that he admits he's a diversity hire. I said, have you forgotten what happened? There's such a cretin these days. Now, this guy, now remember this guy, this guy, this uh, this Sitch Minion, a few, a few tweets back said he's not interested enough to look it up. Doesn't want to look it up. Now, after sustained assault from the hamsters, he says, interested in what? The term or the Jewish influence? In the term, not so much. In the influence, I am. I said, no, so now you're making a narrow semantic and technical point about the word sectional. But so, in fact, know that there is such a thing as Jewish interest and power. So this guy is basically U-turned. This guy, like, he couldn't take the pressure from the hamsters and has basically caved in. Fucking pathetic. He's still, like, trying to defend now this idea that he just didn't know what the word meant. I said the term sectional interest is common parlance all over the world. And even if you've never heard it, the term Jewish sectional interest should be readily understood just through contextual clues. You know, sometimes you don't know what a word means, but you can hear the words around it and you can use your common sense to understand what it means. It really is very stupid not to understand. But of course, these people do understand. And this is the game the Hatchling likes to play. He likes to, he likes to pretend that he's just born from a fucking egg. They do understand. They're just playing games. They're just wasting my time and everybody else's. And I am forcing everybody watching this to come through it with me so that you too can understand what you're dealing with when you're dealing with people like this. If I find out people in my audience are over there, I will ban them instantly. I just do not accept that people should be it's people who watch their show should also be watching my show. I don't accept it. 100% segregation between the AA verse and uh, Adam and Sitchland uh, will be instituted. I'm going to fucking, I am going to keep autistic spreadsheets on who their guests are. I'm going to go through their logs and I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm going to enforce it with an iron fist. I do not want any crossover with these, with these, with these people. <clears throat> So anyway, this guy keeps on going on and on and on. Uh, yeah, leave this guy be. Where does uh, when does when does Sitch come back? So then I I actually made a meme for the first time in my life. I made a meme. Need to deny there's a Jewish sectional interest. Need to accuse people of anti-Semitism. You see, you can't have both. You just can't have both. I mean, because if you if you deny that there's such a thing as a sectional Jewish interest, you're basically asserting that Jewish people are just a random collection. They're just a random collection of individuals pursuing their own separate interests who just happen to have like similar sounding names, but actually they have nothing in common. They're just random people, just a random collection of individuals who have nothing else in common. So there can be no such thing as anti-Semitism, right? If you deny that there's a sectional interest, there's no such thing as anti-Semitism. What happened in mid-century Germany was just a random collection of individuals who had each been going on, minding their own business, going along with their own separate interests, uh, just like any other, just like any other person in the world. And uh, you know, it was just like it was just a miscategorization on the part of the German authorities at that time to imagine that this was a group. And any other, any other time in history that these people have uh, ha had like bad things happen to them, the authorities have just miscategorized individuals as a group. That's what's happened. And that's the, this is the narrative that I'm, that Sitch is trying to sell me here. It's impossible. Either they're a group with interests or they're not a group and they don't have interests. 
if you maintain that they're not a group and they don't have interests, then there can be no such thing as anti-Semitism. Do you understand? If this is logic, foundations of logic. You talked about defining your terms. We're defining our terms. I have yet to see you actually admit that they're a group. Also, Paul piped up. He said, apparently these people have never heard of APAC, the ADL, HIAS, and a host of other quite open, well-funded, and powerful lobbying groups. Imagine if someone denied the existence of the NRA. We would think he was crazy. I said, it's a strange phenomenon, outright denialism. In fact, I find it quite a hateful position that erases Jewish identity and asserts the notion that there is no Jewish group. And this has been PSA Sitch's stated position to date. He simply won't admit that Jewish interests even exist. Now note, we haven't talked about any worldwide conspiracy. We haven't we haven't gone into any details at all. We're we're literally just at the door at the outside of the door of a conversation about whether this is a group with interests. Let's continue. Big Daddy Deadpole, another Sitch minion, comes in. I don't think the I don't like the ADL either. But I don't think the ADL hold as much power as you think they do. I said, is that why Whoopi Goldberg uh, prostrated herself in front of Jonathan Greenblatt as her career hung in the balance a few months back? Tell me more about how little power the ADL has. Um, imagine running cover for the ADL. Imagine claiming that they don't have power. That they don't have much power. I said, why was former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn forced to adopt the ADL definition of anti-Semitism and made to resign shortly thereafter for displeasing them? Who is more powerful, Labour, one of the two major parties in the UK, or the ADL? Well, that's a question for you to answer, Big Daddy Deadpool. And again, if you're from the Adam and Sitch side of things and you feel yourself like in sympathy with Big Daddy Deadpool here... Tell me why you're running cover for the fucking ADL. Why are you running cover? Why are you trying to downplay their influence and their power? Why? Is it ultimately that deep down you support their influence and their power? You actually support the censorship that they do. You support the status quo that they uphold. If so, so be it. But have the guts to say it. Remember... All the way back at the start of the conversation, I I don't have to use code words because uh, because uh, I, you know I I just uh, state my beliefs openly. I've never been censored. Maybe maybe it's because maybe because the ADL likes what he says. Maybe because maybe it's because deep down he and the ADL agree on on loads of stuff, even though he, even though he may have criticised them once or twice. Who knows? I mean, it certainly seems from. Uh, what we're seeing, that there are people playing down the power and the influence of the ADL. Now, why would you do that? Let's have a look. Let's see if anybody's still watching this. Why would anybody play down their power and influence? Don't understand. Somebody also mentioned there was the moment when Jonathan Greenblatt got must to delete his tweet that featured a Hitler comparison. I remember that. Jonathan Greenblatt, just just the president of the ADL, some some say the most powerful man in America, got the richest man in the world to delete a tweet like an hour after he tweeted something. Now, why would Elon Musk, who delights in spending all his time pissing off the liberal establishment, cuck so quickly to the ADL? Can anybody, can, can anybody explain that to me? Why did Elon Musk cuck so quickly to the ADL if they have no power? They don't, have a, they don't hold as much power as I think they do. All right. They only, they've only got the power to replace labor leaders and get the richest man in the world to delete tweets, uh, uh, you know, at the drop of a hat. I mean, what was isn't Whoopi Goldberg like the richest black woman in America or something stupid like that? She's a no, Oprah Winfrey is, but 
Whoopi Goldberg is really pretty, really quite successful. Um, I mean, she was groveling to them as well. And in fact, if you track these things as closely as I do, you'll see that um, shortly after the Whoopi Goldberg thing happened, the ADL actually changed their definition of racism. And um, that definition of racism that was changed was then quickly written into law by a certain Ron DeSantis in his Woke Act down in Florida, based, based Ron DeSantis, uh, in his Woke Act basically reproduced the ADL definition of racism in point one. So it's funny how these things happen, isn't it? Like, you know, less than a month after the ADL changed the definition of racism, that definition of racism found itself in 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 law. But I don't know, just could just could be a coincidence. Maybe I just overrate. Maybe I, they just don't have that power, you know. Interestingly, Tony Blair, who I spend a lot of time looking at uh, on my on my channel, um, he is the special international advisor to the ADL. It's interesting that, isn't it? It's funny how uh, Jeremy Corbyn was also a kind of massive rival of Tony Blair in the in the Labour in the Labour office. So, I don't know, just a little detail for people who like to pay attention. <clears throat> Otto Paul says, no, there is no distinct Jewish ethno-religious, uh, that is what sectional means. Um, sectional interests in the U.S. have organized groups to promote them in Congress and elsewhere. This is a denialist position. Correct, Otto Paul. There's a man who has some educational training, it seems. Uh, so where do we go? So mess around with these minions here. Where's, where's Sitch gone? Uh, uh, so then um then this guy was saying like uh, i don't understand what the fuck you consider the overwhelming jewish identity to be it sounds like it's just the adl in israel to you which call me crazy a liar but i know jewish people personally you don't agree with israel's actions or how the adl operates and i said according to pew research only 16 percent of american jewish people don't consider caring about israel as being important to them and there you can see in this P research that was done in 2019 to, to June 2020, caring about Israel is essential to what being Jewish means to 45% of US Jews and adults. Uh, an additional 37% uh, say it's important but not essential, according to new P. Okay. And just 16% of Jewish adults say that caring about Israel is not important to their Jewish identity. Huh. Weird. I mean, you're making out like it's like there, there's loads of difference between these different views, but I would say that 84% is quite an overwhelming majority who who think that it's important to them. So now, this is, this is what I find really fascinating, is that their position is actually to deny what Jewish people say themselves, which is actually this is important to us. As a group, this is important to us. It's, it's, it's actually a disservice to all of their like forefathers, to like you know to Moses and David and Abraham and all these people who who've been part of the three thousand year struggle to get to get them to this point. And you're just saying like actually they don't have an interest, they don't exist. I, I find it really dis. I mean honestly, I find it disrespectful. And then uh, people were bringing up this fact that Chuck Schumer is pro um, is pro choice in the USA, but he's uh, he pals around with this group called the uh, American Friends of a Frat, who um, are an anti-abortion group in Israel. And so in Israel, uh, and with his Israeli mates, Chuck Schumer is uh, what they call pro pro life, but for Americans, he's pro choice. I mean, considering that abortion is one of the hot button American American political topics, especially with Roe v. Wade on the table at the moment, and Chuck Schumer is the Senate majority leader, that is pretty fucking serious, I would say. Why is one of the leaders of the Democrat Party um, 
inconsistent on that question. Like, why why does he have one rule for Americans and another rule for Israelis? That's a really good question. If PSA Sitch was honest in any way, he'd say, yeah, that is a really good question. You know, I don't know what which way he votes. I imagine Sitch is a Democrat. Uh, I would say demographically, uh, he's more likely to be a, a Biden voter than a Trump voter. Uh, if like with no other information, just looking at him on a piece of paper, I'd say he probably votes Democrat. But I don't know. Maybe he votes Republican. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't vote at all. Maybe he's a libertarian. I don't, I don't fucking know. OK. But as somebody who runs a, a political YouTube channel, he should be like, yeah, that's 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 pretty bad that Chuck should like. You know, I need to I need to double check. Like, is this true for one? First of all, verify the story. Like, is there any veracity to what you guys are saying? And two, if um, if it is true, why didn't the New York Times report on it? Why didn't CNN report on it? Why didn't Fox News report on it? Why was it not one of the biggest political scandals in American in American political history? Surely it should be right. I mean, it would be it would be a massive story if it was. Uh, that I don't know. Let's say. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of an equivalent issue on the other end. I mean, okay, let's say, um, let's say a rabid uh, pro-life campaigner didn't did a sneaky abortion, for example. That would be a massive story, and rightly so, because we expect um, there's a basic expectation for uh, politicians to stand by their stated their stated beliefs. Okay, now we know politicians don't do that, but it's still pretty bad, I would say. And anybody who cares about American politics at all should be like, yeah, that's pretty bad, Chuck. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? You know, even if you were a member of this group, you'd say like, Chuck, don't do that. It makes us look, makes us all look bad. You can even go from that angle. Like, it makes everybody look bad if you if you do things like this. It it actually it actually plays into the talking points of our our enemies. You know, a, a classical, uh, what do they call it? Anti-Semitic canard is that uh, is that of divided loyalties. Do you remember? So when so when Chuck Schumer shows divided loyalties, like that's not good, and people should look at that. People should shed shine a light on it, and maybe in the future Chuck Schumer won't do stuff like that, or maybe he won't be elected at all. God help us. Anyway, this guy's trying to explain away the Chuck Schumer thing now. He's trying to say, well, basically, Chuck Schumer's a political hack. He'll take money, any money you can get away with. Um, regardless, most of the Jewish people don't actually agree with him. Again, call me crazy, but I, I, I don't think the puppet is Chuck Schumer. I just said, according to Pew Research, seven in ten Jewish adults identify with or lean towards the Democratic Party, of whom Chuck Schumer is the majority Senate leader. So there it is. I would say 70% is a pretty big majority of people to have on the side of an issue. So actually, most of this particular group do agree with Chuck Schumer on most, on most issues. It's just a fact. But no, there's no, they're just a random, it's just a, remember, a random collection of individuals pursuing their separate interests just happen just happen to vote the same way and have the same sorts of jobs and belong to the same sorts of institutions and be part of the same sorts of clubs and give money to the same sorts of causes. It's just a, it's just a fucking coincidence. It's just, it's just, um, you know, they're, they're, they're just, uh, they don't, there's no actual interest there. It's, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's Adam Smith's law of free markets or something. Is, is, I mean, I, I don't see this is what I'm saying. I'm, I don't understand what these people want me to believe because they won't admit that this is a group and they won't admit that they have interests. PSA Sitch says, so you're just saying that Jews have some kind of group interest. Why was that so incredibly difficult to say when I asked you what the term meant to you? So I'll go back to what I asked you before. How does this group interest manifest in US politics beyond Israel stuff? I answered, I said, huge Holocaust reparation payments. Uh, if you don't know about that, this is where families get given things like uh, free houses, um, you know, uh, like 
let's say somebody dies and doesn't leave their money to anybody. It's just like sitting in a bank. The government reappropriates that money and gives it to Holocaust survivors. This is this happened. There was several rounds of this. First happened in the sixties and the seventies. There was another round of it in the nineties, and there was another round of it um, uh, about about four or five years ago. There'll probably be another round of it again. Um, I think it's called like Survivors of the Holocaust Fund or something. And um, every once in a while, the the U.S. government will just find pots of money from you know these sorts of cases where somebody dies and doesn't leave any heirs, and it will go to these families. So that's like I would say a massive benefit of uh, of you know organized special group interest, wouldn't you? Like this is pretty. I mean, the whole question of the Holocaust, of course, again can't exist if there's no if there's no uh, special group interest because it's just an event like any other. If you, if you deny that they're actually a group, it's just a ra- it's just a random collection of individuals who was killed. You know, by a by somebody who just just pretended that they existed or something. I, I don't know what they want me to believe. Anyway, another example: government grants for Jewish groups, plenty of those. Anti-Semitism laws. Uh, I think old Ron DeSantis has passed one of those as well. Mandatory Holocaust education in schools. Uh, special Jewish representation on various state and federal level committees, to name but a few. And these are tangible real things that you could look at that you could fact check that you could you could be like oh hold on a second you when you said this what exactly did you mean you know i had a look and i couldn't find any and i might come back and say well actually um if you look here here and here here they are and you'd be like oh yeah that's interesting i didn't know that if you were fucking interested sitch but you're not are you you're just playing games you're not really having this conversation you're trying to stitch me up is what you're trying to do you're trying to get me to say you're trying to get me to say something incriminating so you can report it back to your dickhead friends and try to paint me as some sort of Nazi. That's your game here. I don't think it's worked, though. I think, actually, the opposite has happened, and I have managed to expose you in front of many hundreds of people. And I will continue to say that whenever your name comes up, because you're a dissembling liar. Of course, he didn't, he didn't respond to that didn't acknowledge that that post was made that post there which actually was it one two three four five six separate things that i pointed to that are happening that have nothing to do with israel that are happening in america right now as a result of organized special interest groups he acted like that post was never made Why did he ignore that post? It's weird. I find it really odd. He was trying to paint me, remember, as some sort of person who's obsessed with this issue. Now I've given him an answer, and he just goes quiet. He just just slinks off, just disappears. Let us continue. Aidan Pladin jumped into the fray. And she says, dude, it's frustrating that people think Jews have an in-group interest in some kind of conspiracy when every minority and often majority has in-group interest. It's like saying Native American casinos are a conspiracy. So a bit of a joke from her. But unfortunately, I'm not in the mood for jokes, Aidan. I'm afraid. I find it disturbing that you're friends with him. If I was you, I'd stop being friends with him. I would not pal around with Sitch for a day longer if I was you. But it's up to you what you do. So we are now 72 hours into this PSA Sitch, and we have yet established that Jews are, in fact, a group with interests. Or are we still maintaining like they're a random collection of individuals who happen to work at similar jobs and institutions with similar names. No reply. No reply. See? No reply. It's weird. I wonder what what his parents make of this sort of behavior. I wonder if they they approve of of, of his just outright denialism uh, that this group exists. I just, just find it really weird. 
I said I find it very distasteful that Sitch is trying to erase Jewish identity. He is literally Hitler. Now here he is, and this is the kicker. This was the moment that PSA Sitch went from just being a mere political enemy, a public enemy, to a personal enemy of mine who I will hate for the rest of my life. Sorry, quackers, that I had better things to do on my Sunday than have a, quote, very serious Twitter conversation about the Jewish question. You dishonest fucking cunt, PSA Sitch. You absolute... You brought it up. You asked me incessant fucking questions about it. And when I answered the questions, now you're asking you... Now you're acting like you've got better things to do. Twat! Fucking twat. Time-wasting wanker. Dishonest. disingenuous cunt and there he is look there he is look with a little kiss face so we have come to the point where i decided that there will be no crossover between i will not platform anybody who watches their show or who goes on their show I consider engagement with these people to be a black mark against anybody's name. And I consider PSA Sitch to be a lifelong enemy of mine. And if I ever saw him in real life, I do not want to tell you what I would do to him. Dissembling twat. Baiting, baiting little prick that he is. Time waster. And that is why nobody should ever watch anything with him on it ever again. So let us have a look to see if there's been any super chats or we can get out of here. What a, what a piece of work. Right. Where is entropy? Entropy has been off all this time, I'm afraid. Um, I don't know what, I don't know why that is. I'll put it on now, see if anybody has sent anything in the interim. Send some Cominium says, I am transferring to my little pad thingy to continue listening. Really enjoying this C stream. Sitch plays the hatchling card when it suits. I hope you do more seed streams in the future. So there we go. Um, that was the only one in entropy, but I've just realized it was closed for the whole for the whole stream. I won't forget this, PSA Sitch. As long as you live, you will have me as your personal enemy. Like I said, I'm not a Christian and I don't forgive. And I will not forgive you. So dishonest. It's one thing I can't stand is dishonesty of that nature. I'm just going to incessantly bring up the JQ and then when I actually talk about it, oh, I've got better things to do. There should be costs for your conduct, Sitch. There should be costs. Any American friends watching this, I, I sense danger in a character like PSA Sitch. You know... We go to, a, like, you know, we organize events. People are meeting up in real life and things like that. 
you should put this guy millions of miles away from you. Don't touch him with a barge pole. Think about the game that he was trying to play on Twitter. Think about what he was trying to do there. Think about his framing all the way through. Think about the, all the little moments. Now, not only did he deny that there was such a thing as uh, group interest, period, but he also denied that censorship was real at one point. Do you remember? Do you remember that? Do you remember all of the little dissembling tricks he played along the way? Judge Caligula Bushman says anyone still living in 2016 should be stepped over. Honestly, I, I, I think that PSA Sitch is more dishonest than any Marxists have ever come across. He's probably worse than Vouch, to be honest. At least Vouch kind of owns what he is. I don't think I don't think I don't think Sitch uh, is capable of it. Grongo says we have to starve out the idle chatter of the lesbians. Yeah, I mean any any this type that I have that I have earmarked on this stream, the sitch type, and those other sorts of people who were followers of his who were trying to argue in these hatchling like ways, they should be utterly kept out of our spaces. I don't want anything to do with them. And I don't even care if it's Carl. If I find out people are still going on their streams, I will never have them on again. And if that means I stream solo for the rest of time, so be it. But somehow, uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. <sighs> Avalok says... Colonel Crayon has just sent a super chat saying, Surprise stream, money for Marvel stream. This better feature Bowie salute. Uh, Avalok says, Carl is still friend. He just trusts too much. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I happen to know that Carl did not see any of the exchange because, ironically, Sitch has him blocked on Twitter. So I don't know how that works as he was on their show the other week, but apparently Sitch has him blocked on Twitter. So there we go. Drongo says, Literal snide shadow creature is dishonest, period. Yes. Dishonest, period. Glow in the Dark says, as much as I like a good rant, you still played into the game. Uh, Caffeine Tweaker says, thank you for the list of 100. It was great. Well, thank you very much, Caffeine Tweaker. Uh, C123 says, gradually I began to hate. Dest Runner says, you're the biggest C I've ever seen. Dollface says, you fairy, you company man. Yeah, indeed. Absolute fairy and company man. Uh, Years the Eunuch says, the only interaction we have with the likes of ANS should be via RWDs when we win. I am an ogre, who I believe to be Thomas Baden Reese having a laugh, don't forget. Says quackademic. Although it could be Sitch, of course, because Sitch uses quack Sitch also uses quackademic, so it could be somebody from their sphere, but I think it's Baden Reese still. I am an ogre says quackademic, you're dead wrong about these guys. Unlike you, they try to be objective and tell the truth. Go ahead and block me, fool. Just gives me more time to watch Adam and Sitches and lol. Lolicon. So there we go. Uh, Ogre, of course, is a uh, is our resident troll. All right, I think that's uh, that'll be all. Hope you were entertained. If you were not, uh, don't worry. There won't be too many more of these sorts of streams ever. Every once in a while, though, you have to do a drama stream, and um, this was an exception. He Sitch exceptionally pissed me off uh, through that exchange. And that's why this uh, stream has happened. Suicide for Optimist says, I didn't like them before I watched their uh, debates with Dave. I hated them afterwards. Yeah, I've heard a lot about those debates with Dave. Um, and trust me, it was better 
that I did this on Twitter and did this kind of minor drama stream on AA Goal than actually went on their show or had them on mine. I, I think it was much better to do it this way around. Uh, Death by Cognitive Dissonance says, it is nothing but reasonable to show less and less patience for those who only wish to lie and deceive. Yes, absolutely. You should have absolutely zero tolerance for the, somebody like PSA Sitch, who is a demonstrated dissembler, liar, deceiver, and uh, and a prick on top of it. Don't forget, he he was he he was abusive towards me throughout. I was not abusive towards him, by the way. All of my posts were logical, reasoned. He was just a cunt to me. On top of all of the lies and the deceit and the time wasting. It will never be forgiven. Okay. All right. Um, I think that'll do us. Uh, the Enriab says, um, a Judas goat is trained to lead other animals to the slaughter house in reward for being allowed to live. Its trained trick is... Um, the bewildered herd to ignore their suspicions and smell of death. Glow in the dark says, go and have a drink, calm down. PSA always gives a fair shake to the left, uh, a fairer shake to the left than the right, especially. If you disapprove of certain interests, behavior shows more than words. Um, I mean, the reason for that is because ultimately he is a, the, the liberal left and the socialists are just the same. They're the same, ultimately. They just have different methods of trying to achieve the same objectives. Which, of course, you'd know if you've read any of the literature that I tell you to read. Uh, so there we go. Uh, it's just a flurry of these late super chats before I can get out of here. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I will, uh, maybe I will go and have a, have a lie down now. Uh, and uh, Maybe play, um, may, maybe play some games and have a cigar or something. All right. Now get out.